So Keegan Michael Key this week uh, with his wife L Key. Uh, they've both done a lot in this business we call show. Uh, Keegan is very fun, uh, fun guy to talk to, funny guy to listen to. I see him in a lot of clips out there. He's on so many things, commercials, and he and his wife put together a comedy book about sketches, the history of sketch comedy. Yes, and so we deep dive into that. It was very, very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And Keegan uh, and Al have a very close uh, creative relationship. It's a, mm -hmm. uh, it's a nice thing to see. And uh, he's in Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon is still out there. And, yeah, uh, and uh, I see him on so many things and some football commercials now. But he's always working, always, uh, he's very into character and sketches. And in this book, he dresses like characters in the past. I think Charlie Chaplin all the way up. I think Wayne's World, you know. Uh, yeah, he he analyzed uh, your uh, Bye Bye sketch, the flight attendant sketch. Oh, did sketch. he? Oh, yeah. He, he did. Yeah, we won't tell you what he said. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it was, <laughs> it was an interesting idea of a book uh, to analyze the history of sketch comedy. Sketch comedy doesn't get awards. No one thinks about sketch comedy in, in, as an artistic endeavor. In, you know, endeavor. The, the first um, iteration of the Bye Bye sketch that didn't work as well was that everyone was getting on the plane and we were like, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't as funny. I remember when Lauren Michaels, it was just a, a word thing. He didn't, he didn't like, uh, I don't think we should really be calling it a skit. He hates the word skit. Yeah. It's a skit. Uh, it, it's a sketch. Yeah. No, for not some a reason. Skit. Have you ever seen people that say, you know, this guy's stick is that he acts a lot of crazy characters. I go, you mean shtick? I don't even know what shtick means, but I know no. it's not stick. Yeah. <laughs> like a stick? Yeah. I don't anyway, know. anyway, let's listen. Uh, we had a lot of fun with them, as we always do. So a lot of laughs. Are. Enjoy the episode. Thanks for listening, fans. <laughs> <laughs> fans <laughs> i don't know I we people are like that's a strong word wait have we started wait what oh wait, we, we've been on for 20 minutes we sort of just roll into it but we take out the fat and it winds up being about six minutes we don't take anything out but you can call us right after this and edit anything you want so say anything you want and then and we will take <laughs> we will cut that fucking thing out man you you can like syllables and a name yeah so i i met you two as a couple at the oscars right Yes, with That's Mike, right. with Mr. Myers. With, with Mike Myers, yeah. That was exciting. Yeah, I actually, I, I texted him this morning and I, I let oh. him know that this is what we were doing today. And um, he just, he just said, Dana is a doll. Dana is brilliant. Dana, 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 Dana. Um, by the way, do you know that you Dana. are- yeah. Dana. I know Dana. I know oh, Dana. Uh, yeah, she, she corrects him. She's like- no, he keeps complimenting. No, I'm, I'm, pro I'm protesting, and also, oh, nice, you know. Right. <laughs> Wait for the next text. It'll be all about me. Just give it a second. He adores you both. I'll, I'll, I'll text him now. Um, do, do you know Dana that you are on the cover of our book? Yes, I saw it, and I <laughs> called. I'm not a big uh, lawsuit guy. I looked. In, <laughs> I, I checked in. I am. And you know what? It's my gift to you. Thank oh, you. That's Thank not, you. <laughs> I even told him this morning, I said, do you know this? And he said, oh, yeah, I love it. That is the most insanely flattering. So for people who just joined us, <laughs> we're live. Um, L and Keegan wrote a book about the history of sketch comedy and, and have a podcast. And on the cover of it, Keegan is doing all these, you're dressed as all these famous archetypal yeah. characters through the history. And there you are with Garth. So I was absolutely flattered. So I'll absolutely. We, we, did, I, I we did actually call Mike for, we called Mike for permission. We didn't call you, sorry. But we, we did call Mike and I, I said, I, I want to do um, Wayne or Garth from Wayne's World because it's so iconic. And he said, oh, you should definitely do Dana. Do Dana. Oh, it's, now that is silly because I always knew no matter what, 
it's called Wayne's World. <laughs> you know, right. it's not Garth's World. <laughs> yeah. I'm the guy next to the guy. You know, so but uh, that's very generous. Uh, we're you know when you get older, you get wisdom. You you, you put your weapons down. You, you get very nostalgic. You tear up a lot. You know, you'll see. <laughs> You're too young. You poop your pants. Well, there's there's a bunch of images I can send to you later that ended up not getting used. <laughs> <laughs> She's showing us on her phone. Garth, well, Garth is like, a funny look. Garth is funny, Dana. Garth, That's a Garth good look. Does, Garth does have that funny. There is something always going on with the mouth. There's, yeah. a, there's always that, you know, there's that right we Yeah. It's totally like that, that like curled lip thing, that, which is always what was the money of the character to me. And then dropping the rhythm. You're like, yeah, I had a good time. So he doesn't quite say time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I had a good time. Time. Yeah. Ten. And then all his tension is in his jaw. I'm not really a method actor, but yeah, everything is just there. <laughs> God. Everything's there. You guys are, I mean, looking at your resumes, everything you've done. And now the history of sketch comedy, what gave you the reason to write that? I mean, it's very interesting. I was listening to the Audible one last night. And it's really fun and interesting as you go along and get into vaudeville and stuff and all, all how it all came together. I don't know. Do you want to start there? We can go yeah. anywhere. Yeah, start there. Let's start there. So uh, a couple of years ago, I uh, someone had asked Keegan about writing a book. Would you ever consider writing a book? And um, I Keegan Keegan and I had this conversation. He's like, God, it's you know, it's we know it's not easy to write a book. It's a whole process. And I was like, well, he married he married a writer director. So I was like, well, I'll help write the book. And mm -hmm. he's like, I'm not really interested in writing a book. So I just said, well, you know what? I'm going to just interview you for the next seven years and to collect stories and information. And I wrote and directed for a sketch comedy show in college. And mm -hmm. I worked off Broadway and I've been doing things for years. And when we got together, I started writing for him. And I said, you know, I really think there's a fun way of you being kind of the, the tour guide mm -hmm. or like the host yeah. into all mm -hmm. of these things. And you're so accessible and, and he's so easy to talk to and communicate with. I just thought it would be really fun. Jeez, that's so cool coming from a wife. It really is, isn't it? That'd yeah. be more like a girlfriend. A That'd be like a girlfriend, but a wife going, well, wow, he's pretty cool. No, it's very, you read classic sketches. You, you do characters. The Audible book is incredibly entertaining. I have a question right now, though. As you started this journey, you're interviewing your husband, both of you, did you kind of, as you went along, more themes came up and more like this was the archetypal event? He and he kind of stayed out of it, I feel like. Well, I would say to him things like, when did you hear about Second City? When's the first time you heard about Second City? And then he said, actually, he was reading an autobiography of John Belushi by Bob Woodward. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's an interesting story. So I was like, okay, this is going to be in a chapter somewhere, is, is how do you get into talking about Second City or schools of comedy? And then- I asked him when the first time he heard his father laugh was, and it was happened to be watching Eddie Murphy on Saturday Night Live. And that's the first. I like he has all these good answers. So, by the way. I know. So I was like, this thing writes itself basically. So then that, that podcast that you, the, the audible series came about because when COVID started, I pitched my teams and agents, this idea of I'm going to write this book on sketch comedy and I'm writing it as a kind of a love letter to Keegan and, and my love of comedy and they said, you know, would you consider doing a podcast? And I said, sure. And then I pitched Audible this idea that if Keegan Michael Key was teaching an NYU course on sketch comedy, and it was a 10 part class, it would be a very, very crowded class. And it would be a lot of fun. And yeah, it's funny. It start, and where would it go? And then I pitched them the idea for those of you who don't know, there are are no clips used in the entire podcast. There's not one audio. Right, it's it's a tour de force, I might it's say. It's all Keegan. Uh, Keegan always. is every voice of every character in every sketch. And um, and I wanted to continue that with the book, which is why I when I designed the cover, I pitched Audible this idea of, what if instead of Keegan performing, what if Keegan, we dress Keegan up? And as a matter of fact, um, Lou Zakarian helped me with all the hair and makeup who was on, who's on Saturday Night Live, does the hair and makeup. And then uh, I the the original idea for the book cover was, you know, the evolution of man, like the cro man Yeah, yeah, the classic. So when you open the book, the first thing you see 
is all of those characters. I'm still in there? My God, God damn. Who's ahead of me? What the fuck? <laughs> They're showing Garth again. I should be at the end. I don't have any. I want to... I uh, love. I'm. I'm biased. It's like you're only. It yes. Is, it is substitute. The substitute teacher is ahead. It's just only because of the time. Well, it's the. I, I did look up that two hundred and two hundred and thirteen million views on YouTube. A, another tour de force as the yeah. substitute teacher on uh, the Key and Peel show. So that was classy. What I loved about the book when you got into. Naming, okay, who was the linchpin for television? How did people adapt from vaudeville to radio? I was into all that section, which I found fascinating, and how Milton Berle was kind of the first TV sketch comedy superstar. That that was I, I like all that stuff. It was really cool. I really like the variety TV. I don't know mm -hmm. how far you've gone into that's, variety that's TV. That's next. So I was a yeah. huge Donnie and Marie fan. Or, oh, yeah. And then we started oh. doing this deep dive of, Every single person we could find who was on a variety TV or Amazing, had a variety right? TV show. Yeah, it was it and was it was nuts. If you think about the fact that Howard Cosell had a variety show called yeah. the, the the Howard Cosell show. No, what? And then it was Saturday Night Live, right? As well, I think it, it oh, was. Oh right no, you're right. That. It was called Saturday Night Live. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's yeah. Right. And Lauren said he's not using it anymore. <laughs> I think Saturday Night Live was called Saturday Night for a while. Then or Saturday, Saturday Night, Night with Howard Cosell. Everyone had, every musician, Glenn Campbell, I mean, yeah, it's infinite, right? Everybody, Everybody had, had one. Everybody yeah. had one. It was amazing, right? Yeah. And then sometimes they're on ice skates, right? Sometimes Donnie <laughs> Oh, yeah. Ice. It was, you know, when I was watching those, I of course, I loved them growing up. Um, and Captain and Tennille, it seems like oh, you have man. one hit song, you get 13 episodes of a, of a TV show. show. Anything. Yeah. Like they, everyone, they just threw them out there. Johnny Cash had one. Uh, the, Brady, Ta the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. Um, had a Mary variety. More. That's right. With David Letterman and my, uh, Michael Keaton. But yeah, we're, very short-lived. Very short-lived. Oh, yes. really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I've been on a lot of short-lived stuff, but we can go into that later. But <laughs> short-lived is, is a very short. polite way of saying it lived. But shortly, <laughs> it wasn't a smash. But so, El, you put all this together. So you had to apply right. interviewing him and then kind of get this narrative and look up Milton Berle and kind of expand. Yeah, and then Keegan, yeah. Keegan would help me. And then we'd figure out um, it, it was a little bit of a challenge because the podcast and the book are are different. There's a mm -hmm. lot of clips from the podcast that are kind of the through line. But I also, for the book, was very uh, fortunate enough that people like the brilliant David Spade gave me a few minutes of their time. Yeah. So there are little, yeah, um, what did he little, say? Was it wise and funny? Oh yeah. Did oh, I yes. say anything good? Yes, of course. Of course you did. Nothing um, off the top of our head, but he did say a lot of interesting. <laughs> so, so basically the, the, um, so Chronicle is the publisher and they asked, they said, do you think you could get a couple quotes from some people in sketch comedy and because of all of the goodwill and all of the people Keegan and I have met over the years, I ended up doing these little kind of mini interviews with about 35 people. Yeah, give a list. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. from Chris Rock, Mike Myers, David, of course. Um, and then uh, Carol Burnett, who I did Did you call. reach out to me and I blew you off? I don't remember being asked, mm -hmm. but I would have done Stonewall. it. Stonewall. <laughs> I I actually, I, no, one, no one can get near Dana I in his will fortress. never, even though I'm the second in command on the, on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Long, long before the cover. I think it's because I had only met you once, and I think um, other that's, people, that's all right. maybe I had a little bit more. But L, L, right now, li live, because we're going live globally today. Mm -hmm. uh, not really. What would you have asked me? We can just fill it in for people. So, so basically, what I did was try to figure out, so there's, I kind of broke it down to 10 different sections, 10 chapters, and figure out what would make sense. So we did talk to Kevin Nealon, and there were a bunch of uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, so there are some people that talk, like Kevin Nealon talks about uh, Lauren Michaels. He also does talk a little bit about, you are, I mean, you are in a little bit. He talks a little bit he about Hans about, and Franz. He talks about Hans and Franz. Hans mm -hmm. and Franz, that was 100%, me and Kevin, we were like. Hans, Hans and Franz yep. is in the book. Um, so I probably would try to figure out what, what subject in the book, and I would tell you what they are, that mm -hmm. you had some kind of relationship to. So for example, you said you love the stuff about early, the early television. Yeah. So then I would ask you about something that has to do with early television and then made a little sidebar 
in that chapter on uh-huh. your thoughts or some else's I'm, thought. you know, on every level, I'm fascinated by the history of comedy. I am fascinated by how the hell in the early 60s with Bob Newhart and Bill Cosby and others, their comedy albums were that crackling. Because I'd sit in the dark with vinyl and I've never mm-hmm. heard sound like that. That present, I was told they would, and they'd be in little tiny clubs like the Purple Onion, and put one mic overhead or some reason. They are so lively that fascinates me, just the sound of it. But yeah, I have kind of a question and/or observation because I have grumpy old men in my life, like music ain't no good anymore. And I go, doesn't the music just reflect what the culture's doing at the time? And so, with the the last fifty years of comedy, obviously it's gotten looser or whatever. What is today's sketch comedy telling us about where we are as a culture? You have 30 seconds. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one, Dan. I I had nothing. I was spitballing. I'm talking too much. No, that was my next question. Key and and Peele, as an observer and a fan, Key and Peele certainly came out of having an African-American president, came out of what was going on in the culture, Mm -hmm. having two mixed-race hosts. Yeah. So maybe I think it's true. I, I don't I don't think I don't think we would have had a show if Obama hadn't become the president. Mm. And it's one of those interesting things where you look at the you look at his demographic and you look at our demographic and it's exactly the same coming from single parent homes, coming from interracial relationships. But I think also the other thing about Key and Peel is there's something very cinematic about the show. That that a lot of the sketches tell stories. They're not like we don't. We never did any like uh, game show sketches, which is one of my favorite things ever on Saturday Night Live or mm-hmm. game show sketches. But you don't see them in Key and Peele, which is interesting. You see more storytelling in the sketches, and also doing things very often that would be able to happen in real life. And the reason I think that Dana is because so many people get their comedy and derive their comedy nowadays from YouTube, like watching a real YouTube video of a person really... Last night, what did you show me last night? You were showing me, oh, the fireworks thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like the, like a, a video where somebody set off some fireworks and the fireworks went awry across someone's front yard. In the front yard, yeah. yeah. But, goes under the car. Goes yeah, under yeah. the car. Goes under the car. Right, exactly. And blows up like the car. And, and, blo- and blows <laughs> up the car. But it keeps heightening. Yeah, it keeps. Heightening. Yeah, because and it was actually like a well done sketch because it right. was got bigger and then people start pulling their kids away. Right, 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 exactly. And 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 it felt like it felt like you almost not that you have to, but very often I think people are influenced by that and they mm-hmm. start writing sketches like that. So yes. they don't mm-hmm. they don't do the high concept sketches as much as they do in life sketches. So that is kind of a choice, I think, when because Keegan and I write write together and Keegan was very specific on Key and Peel about you go from a five, like and we do talk about it in the book and mm-hmm. the podcast. You go from kind of a you start at a five and you go to a 12 to an 18 yep. to 27, then 110. Like the I said bitch sketch, you know, keeps heightening and heightening. Oh, that's what I loved about Key and Peel, that the beginning was so real. And, yeah. and you had told me about your guys' technique. And, uh, you know, Saturday Night Live had its lane. And so when you came out, that show came out, it was something new. You know, it was mm-hmm. very filmic and played very serious. And then just go ahead, finish your thought, Elle. It just, it's like a boiling a frog, right? It's like, yeah, even the teacher one, it just, I, didn't, I wasn't even sure where it's going. And then it starts, you're getting angrier and it just gets crazier and crazier. And you, crazy. know what, you know, I thought was a uh, clever one was the auction. Because I, I don't see where that's going. And that's then when one of my start favorite, doing yeah. You're like, this yeah. is fucking hilarious. And it's hilarious, hilarious, and it's over. And so you don't start getting tired. You don't start going, all right. Right, right, go, yeah. Oh, and, shit. And, and then we're just done. We're just done. Yeah, yeah. it's like, good, good joke, good joke, over. But part, that's hard part of the reason why the, the it, I mean, how do you make a, a slave auction something so serious and make it funny? But that's, it's not about the auction. It's about people's egos getting hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's, that's the fun part that's about the, yeah, it. Yeah, that's the actual theme of the of the sketch. The theme, the, yeah, the, the, <laughs> for people who haven't seen it, basically, that Keegan and Jordan are two out of three spots on a in a slave auction, and the first person who comes up 
next to them keeps getting bit on and they never get bit on. And at first they're like, Oh, you can't, I mean, you can yeah, you can't, you, it's like, you're like, you know, good. I'm glad he got sold because I don't want to be owned by another human being. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I ain't trying to get owned up in here, you know? <laughs> and then every time a guy comes on the lot and gets sold, we're just like, okay, no, that's interesting. <laughs> Why are we not I'm getting actually picked? physically Why bigger than him? Getting, I mean, yeah. what's going Why on with lot A? This? They're not buying anybody on lot B or C. Right. I feel like I'm taller than other gentlemen. I feel like yeah. I have more stamina than that gentleman. Maybe they can't see us from their angle. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> it's right. always these weird excuses of like why they're not getting. Yeah, but the little not, shrimpy guy comes on and you're like, now, okay, now it's too much. This is this, this is, is a much. trick. Right. Like Do this they is even know ridiculous. What they're looking for, like yeah, I know that was very funny. You articulate. <laughs> and the way you two played it, kind of just casual dudes talking, you know, yeah. it was just against the yeah. whole darkness of the situation. But each back and forth, Dana, like the last minute is like joke. He does a joke like on top of each other. Yeah. But each one is a quality, funny thing to say. And then it was over. I was like, oh, that was great. My biggest yeah. flaw is I'm a perfectionist. Right. right yeah. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. I know magic. Um, <laughs> when they got on the boat, I put up no fuss. Here's how I did. I like jumped on. They were like, I was like, right. I, I was. I didn't bump in anyone. Yeah. I jumped right on. It's like it's so funny. So yeah. funny. So good. So those are like you could watch those. You know, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm I'm gonna do a 40 minute question. So stay close. So um, <laughs> and then you'll have 12 seconds at the end. <laughs> To answer, Good. but you, but when I when I wouldn't see as much Key and Peel when it's out, maybe out of jealousy, but you know I would see it here and there, and then with the TikTok and and Instagram, I start seeing it. And then when I watch a few now, more come up, and so it's a whole probably another world of fans that yeah. is great. Yeah, it's, it's got to be. It, it's 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 insane. It's incredible because now we see we'll be walking down the street and there'll be like a fifteen year old. And a 15 year old is like, oh my God, I love, I love you're Balake. You're, you're, you're Balake. You're, yeah, you're Balake. And I go, wait a minute, you're 15. I'm trying to do the math in my head. I'm yeah. going, wait a minute. Our sh you, were, you were four when our show came out. <laughs> <laughs> or, or even, <laughs> like, you, when you talk about it a little bit, because someone's like, God, I love your YouTube show. And King is like, what? Oh, oh yeah. All oh, right. Catches from. 10 years mm -hmm. ago that are now on YouTube. That are now on YouTube and on TikTok. They think oh, they yeah. think that those sketches are new sketches. What was it originally? Was it Comedy Central? It was on Comedy Central. Yeah, it was on Comedy Central and we started- God, they don't off. do that kind of stuff anymore. It doesn't seem like. It's YouTube is the place, man. I mean, because yeah, Comedy man. Central, you're inside Comedy Central. Now you you potentially have 5 billion people digitally. You're everywhere. And your sketches were, it, by and large, evergreen, right? I mean- Yeah, by and large, evergreen because- yeah. the, the writing process took so long. We couldn't do we couldn't do topical stuff, which which worked out to, worked out to our advantage. Yeah. yeah, one one show on TV doing it live having topical, I think, is enough. It's not easy. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It's well, also stuff. shooting, filming, editing, and then coming out with a release date. You know, it's like too hard to figure out like what's going on in the news that week. It wouldn't even make sense. No, I I love I love the excessive celebration. Can I talk about that one? The football one, sure, because sure, that yeah. that probably wound down as hard as I'd seen anything wound down. Starting out with just people, I guess it started with the idea that you can get penalized for celebrating too much if you touch, get a touchdown. If the if the ref says that's too much, and you take it to such absurd lengths and build it, to, I, do you want to talk about I, that? Was a huge one for you, right? I mean. It, that hysterical. was a huge one. In, in fact, it, it it was also because it got emulated by actual football players. Oh, that they actually the, oh, did great. some of the moves. Yeah. Yeah. Actual football players in real life would do the moves <laughs> like that. So, yeah. And they get fined for it. Yeah. And they would get fined. Yeah. yeah. And so we, I, I think that part of what it was um, is, is, is that once again, it goes back to that theory of starting as real as possible, starting at that three or that five mm -hmm. and, and just build it. And, th and that one doesn't go to 600 million or anything like that. That one just goes to like <laughs> 48, but it's still, it, it, it kind of exists real enough that it could, it, it's like you could see a player and their ego doing that in real life. And right. um, it really, it really, it really was, uh, it was so much fun. And um, we did, I, we did actually, I did at the Pro Bowl a, a few a few years ago. We did a video that L directed and created that was really the, funny. The NFL, we we're both football fans. The NFL, we've been doing a bunch of things, and I um, was a head writer for the NFL Honors that Keegan oh. hosted last year, and wrote a musical silly number for him with singing in the audience with Gronk and Roger Goodell. 
So at the Pro Bowl, they asked us if we would do something with touchdown celebrations. And um, they'd asked if we could make up a character that's like a touchdown celebration coach. So I pitched Keegan and and Roger and the NFL this idea that his name would be uh, Jim Light Brown after <laughs> Jim Brown. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Silly so uh, they wouldn't go with Jim Light Brown, but oh, they, they would. <laughs> they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't yeah. do it. <laughs> Seems like sort of in the middle. You could get away with that, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so um, I happened to be born in the Bronx. So I was like, okay, what about Boogie Down? Boogie Down Brown. So we came up with this character, Boogie Down Brown, and we did a couple of videos and they're online. They're easy to find where Keegan is teaching very seriously, very heartfelt, teaching players the most important part of a football game, which is the celebration after the touchdown. And we did a bit with the Detroit Lions with Matt Stafford when he was was quarterback over there and a bunch, bunch of people, the Lions and so I had to come up with a bunch of touchdown celebrations that we're teaching them along the way. And uh, it was around Christmas time. So I actually taught five or six of the Detroit Lions how to do a Rockettes kick line. You know, like, <laughs> new kick, yeah, new kick. That would look funny. It's in the video. And that weekend they scored a touchdown and did a Rockettes oh, kick line. Wow. A Detroit kick Lions ball game. chain. Yeah. It, it was, it's why it's so fun. It's fun that there are a couple of those sketches that, actually the, 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 were influenced it, not influenced that's the word i'm looking for they morphed into real life mm -hmm. yeah you know I mean? people are called a i mean we i was saying we were at a yankee game and aaron judge it would be like a a ron everyone loves that the fact that they are now a a ron if especially yeah. if they tell keegan their story my name is blake and everyone calls me the <laughs> he's like i can and guess my, I my cousins take well now and we don't call her jacqueline anymore we just right, call right, her Jake right, right right you know I'm what was the girl nice. denise she's like denise denise Denise, Denise, Denise. Say it Denise. right. Say it right. D nice. Thank it just you. goes wham, 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 wham. And then she finally goes, D nice. Ah, oh, there you go. Could you relate to this? I, I kind of, I, I, hard to articulate, but I, sometimes I think the most absurd sketches have five questions. You know, like, ooh, interesting. Why is this guy a substitute teacher? Wouldn't he have been fired the first day? Why can't he articulate the names? Why are the students reacting that way? They're not just leaving. There's three. But when you get to five, it's sort of like that's at maximum absurdity, it seems to me. Like Churchley, why does she have that? W w why is that person in drag or not? <laughs> who is this person? Why does she right, go on the show and torture people? What does she think to gain from the show? Who are her followers? What does she do after the show? I know it's just kind of uh, that stuff. You have to have the wrong answer to every one of those questions, and then it's a sketch. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's like, well, we can't. Prove all these, so it's a sketch. Yeah, so it's a sketch. Good. Yeah. Listen, well, Bar good when you listen, get... Barbara. It's Barbara. I said Barbara. You know, it's just that. Man. Who is that guy? Does he know yeah. he's insane? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I don't. Know. But more pissed can, you I, get. can I ask you about like um, Mad TV was sort of its own lane. I don't know if it's still on. It was on for a long time. You were on it for five years, and yep. it seems like there's the SNL crew, and then there was the Mad TV crew, and just learning that you were the only former mad tv which kind of surprised me f player to host snl so do you think there's a is it a, a coke and pepsi wow. it is a yin and yang what is the sensibility of mad tv versus snl or the or the aesthetic there there was i think the aesthetic is that a lauren question that might be a lauren oh, question. Um, that might be a lauren uh, yeah. uh, uh, spell aesthetic first i want to see if you could do that <laughs> <laughs> it starts Don't start with me starts with an a yeah. It's interesting. I think the biggest difference um, was there was a really unapologetic naughtiness about Mad TV that that I think <laughs> it was almost like yeah. <laughs> it was very body and raunchy. And I think because it was flying under the radar a bit mm -hmm. more, there was that sense of that we're really we really are going to push the envelope as much it as we It was underdoggy. Yeah, it was very underdoggy and very, we can do whatever we want and rough around the edges. Mm -hmm. And there was this sense of also, like, you know, we would get to do those 10 to 1 sketches. 
in, in earlier in the show. Yeah, yeah. Like, so for those people who are listening, like uh, you guys can help me with this. You guys know a 10 to one sketch is a sketch on Saturday Night Live that would happen 10 minutes before 1 a.m. Oh. or five minutes before 1 a.m., which will be one of the experimental sketches or experimental videos or really super absurdist sketches. Yeah, or or sketches that got very few very few laughs during the dress show as well. During the dress during the during the dress. Yeah, but they and, do like but them. they're they sometimes the them. best, you know. Yeah. The best. Yeah, sketches. right, exactly. And and I think usually comedians and and sketch performers love those sketches. Like adore oh, those sketches. Yeah. And, and and we used to get to do that. We used to fight a lot with our executive producers on Mad TV, but they would often let us do those sketches smack dab in the middle of the show. You know, you always say those credential yeah. sketches for the beginning. Mm -hmm. But but they would let us do that. And um so that was to me the biggest that was the biggest kind of difference between the two shows is how bawdy it was. And also that they were pushing, pushing kind of an ethnic envelope too. Cause there were at one point in time, there were four of us, there were four African-Americans on the show at the same time. Mm. And that was something that you, you weren't seeing as I much. I don't think Atlanta. that happened on SNL. No, 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 no not for it once. Well, well, we also had in living color. I think Dana, probably that was more when you were on when that was pretty huge. Oh yeah. That was and it was trickling into us because Chris Rock, when he left, went to In Living Color. And, uh, but it was like the final year. It was sort of had its heyday. It was winding down. But man, they were doing, uh, it was that. They were blew up so big, doing so much crazy shit. I think we were jealous on SNL. You're like, I wonder if we could get away with that. And, but we really, it wouldn't have been our brand right then and there. It was like, it would have been copying because they right. blew up. And then you've got that. Then you, Mad TV was always bubbling under with a good sketch here and there you'd hear about. And then they went up against SNL, I think, on Saturday. Was that for a long time, or? Yeah, it was most of the time. So we would, you guys would start at, we'd start at eleven, and then oh, all okay. the programming at eleven thirty is okay. like you, you never wanted your sketch to be on at eleven thirty because SNL was about to come on. Oh, they might switch, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and people would switch over. But you guys weren't yeah. live, right? Or were you pre-taped? Or were you? We live? weren't live. Yeah. We were not live. No, 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 no. We were we were taped. Because my theory about SNL, I'd like your opinion on this, is that it maybe accidentally went in became a reality show that people love and that you got a football player or an actor trying to do live sketch comedy that's so because for me sometimes if F snl has a bad show it's still fascinating if the host is awkward and reading off the card so there's it's a bit of a train wreck it's a high wire act so it, it that element yeah. is always there but why you guys just wrote the book in the history of sketch comedy why do you think it's lasted a half century you don't have to, I, I, David. <laughs> no, they're thinking. <laughs> they're thinking. They, I they think. I think great, that's. They might have the right answer. <laughs> I think one element I is do. that, and second is that Lord Michaels. He was not there for a few years, but he's resisted changing the the iconic brand because there were years of Saturday Night Live dead, pre tape it for an hour, Mad TV is where it's at, right. change the yeah. theme, a lot of pressure, and it. We've interviewed all these cast members, and David and I are like, we're we're there. Everything is exactly the same as far as how it's done 8h yeah. maybe that's part of it i don't know i i think part of it is the the sporting event of it i think what you're saying about the there's some there's chaos of it you're you know in being backstage watching keegan get ready for it was pretty fascinating mm -hmm. like you are you are about to go on it's like a broadway show you're you you have to go on whatever happens happens and there's nothing else like it and when a sketch dies, at least on the East Coast, it dies on television, which is interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think what you just said, Elle, is a great way of putting it. Sporting event, like it's because it's a, it's like a you live watch event. It in live. You, watch you, it live. You want to watch it live, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it, it's rock rock and roll. You get yeah. You know, how did you like? So there you are live on SNL, and so it's kind of rock and roll energy. It's just a different energy than really cool films you were making on key and peel. So how did you, how did it, how did, how did you find it? I, I, well, having been on second, having been at the second city for six years. So you've done it. Yeah. So, so it, it, I had to remind myself, remember, you've done this before. You've done this before. You Still did this scared, for six straight years. And then the, and the other thing I had to remember to do was just play to the audience in the room. Don't let anybody, I tried to avoid anybody talking to me about, hey, you're on TV, you're live in front of right. millions of people. 
it's it, 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 I so I try to play to like the 200 people in that room. Mm-hmm. So yeah. That you're just in that room with them having a great old time with those with that audience. And everyone's watching. So you just get they get to see because it's more real if you're playing here instead of like, you know, out to the rafters. Right. It, right exactly. That's exactly, what I yeah. would do. Because if I thought what was really happening and in those days, 20 million or something, it would really, you know. But Al, since you, you know Ke- uh, Keegan so well, were you there along the week with him? Just sort of kind of going. Yeah, I am. Um, I mean, they, they knew. Um, everyone knew that I've been Keegan's writing partner for a while. So. I, I actually uh, was given an opportunity. I don't know if I'm allowed to. I was given an opportunity yeah. to pitch well, some script that's, ideas. That's very so that's cool. I got not, I got to p- I I pitched a few I pitched a few ideas like Keegan and I together and we're on the phone with 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 everyone and and uh, uh, Higgins Higgins yeah, yeah. Higgins. Steve Higgins and, know him well yeah Steve Higgins so we were on with Higgins who also of course is friends with Mike so Mike yeah. and they knew that this was we were going to throw out some ideas. And um, uh, one, it, it it was a really really interesting process. I was able to help cut a few things and trim a few things, and th- there the Muppet sketch was fantastic. I mean, not Mupp- uh, the the Kermit the Frog, yeah, the Muppets. Yeah, uh, but I, I thought I thought that that's a like an all time sketch. I it hit me so hard fantastic. the concept Is that of it security. Yeah, we talked about this before. I think how great it probably it came up, but I, it's something about that sketch. Mm-hmm. I think is is like a like a Hall of Famer. But it's funny because he's he's not playing the substitute teacher, but he still gets to play the guy who is <laughs> extremely. Oh, angry when they and start they, beating they, the shit out of the puppets and stuff, it's so <laughs> it's it, again it escalates nicely, and it it's just a it's a beautiful. Sketch. I did so one of one of the lines, and and you might tell me if I if I did wrong here, but uh, I was able to cut. So when they're beating up the, like they're about to beat up the Muppets or they're really <laughs> upset and they're going to beat up, you know, the, the guys in the, in the uh, balcony mm-hmm. on the yeah. sketch, it was like, you know, uh, don't, you know, you're going to kill him like you killed that teenage boy or so, there was some line like that, that I was like, I, I think beating up the Muppets is enough. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was already Muppets. in the chaos. Didn't you say, oh, they must be veterans that lost their legs yes. or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> already, that's already edgy enough right there. I don't I, think. Yeah, you yeah. Need. yeah, I don't think they need, he also killed a kid. I, I would agree with to... that trim personally. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, and so, so one of the things I, I pitched them, they ended up using a couple weeks later in a different kind of version. <laughs> which is interesting, which I learned. Oh, that's, um, that's flattering. Um, yes, I was told that's fair. It is flattering. You were um, told it's the, flattering. The other one. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> what did you say? No, the, she was told that was flattering. Right, right. That's what someone said when they used one of my jokes in their act. Yes. Right, they go, yeah. that's flattering. I go, oh, oh, okay. I was looking at it through the wrong lens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what was this so sketch? They did, they did, ske- they did, do, well, I'll tell you the one. They, they actually went to dress with a sketch that I had pitched, and it was, after two years of COVID, so Keegan, and it's in the book too, Keegan was in a Renaissance festival when he was younger. He got to perform and do bits and, ac- you know, acrobat <laughs> stuff and run around a Renaissance, an actual Renaissance festival. And I thought, wouldn't it be great with all of the hashtags and PC and how politically correct and sensitive everybody is to everything? Mm-hmm. What if there was a sketch about a, a, a Renaissance festival that had been shut down for the last two years for COVID and now they're back. So they're back and they're going to start like, welcome back. It's been two years. So, you know, we haven't had a festival in a couple of years and we're back and we're very excited, but um, we are going to make a few small changes to, to uh, the festival. (laughs) For example, um, we're not going to be using the word wench. We've decided that wench doesn't work for this and that, you know, so Uh it became like the Mm -hmm. joke bucket was, how many things can you do? And then say, oh, and you know what we're not going to do? Uh, oh, you know what the other thing too is we're going to cut, you know, Keegan, whatever Keegan's character's name is, is um he's not going to get chased by the cops and get beaten up, you know, chased by the, <laughs> the, nice the get, sheriff. by the yeah. sheriff and get beaten up in front of everyone while the kids throw fruit at him or whatever it was. And he was like, wait, but that's my, like, that's the that's best my part. Shtick. That's, that's my shtick. Best. <laughs> that's, hey. That's all I do in and they're like, yeah, we just feel that maybe Keegan, you know, getting beaten up by sheriffs in front of small children probably is not the best look. And then I was like, and then you could say, well, what if we use someone else? 
They're like, okay, who would we use? And then like, uh, can we use Bowen? Definitely not. We're not using Bowen. We're not going to beat up Bowen. The cops aren't going to beat up the only Asian guy in the cast. So so anyhow, so that was, and they ended up, it ended up, they ended up writing a sketch and we pitched jokes for it and and it made it to dress rehearsal. And I think it somehow in dress rehearsal just kind of ran Mm, out. Didn't click. Just, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, it's sometimes funny when it's funny at like read through and rehearsal, and then you get to dress and you go, "What am I missing here?" Something either start off on the wrong foot. It, it, it changed. It changed a lot over the last, over the few days. Oh, is that what happened? They well, were tweaking. As you two would know, being there where it was in the studio was important. If it's oh, yeah. if it's sort of cerebral in that sense, I don't know if it had a if the sound broke, it would still be funny. Ex- escalation. I think it got very. I think it got very stretched out. So yeah. That it wasn't, it wasn't the 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 timing of the jokes and um and Keegan and I when we first when we first met and talked about working together um we had a lot of conversations about jokes and turns and where you think it's going and why things are funny and hey have you just heard like, this joke like just like the science jokes. the science of comedy just, yeah and, and the science of hard jokes and Elle has an encyclopedic knowledge of jokes like she has she knows jokes like you 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 can't even believe well what's one that pops into your mind Al? no i don't want to put you on so, the phone. like joke like hard joke jokes yeah okay. um well the, the first the first joke i told keegan was and and forgive me if anyone's heard but there's a little kid and he's smoking and this old guy comes up to him and he says kid you know you really shouldn't smoke it's it's not healthy it's really bad for you and the kid says well my grandfather's 95 years old the guy goes, wow, and he's a smoker? And he goes, no, he minds his own fucking business. <laughs> like, There's the turn, yeah. <laughs> so where's See? the, you know, that, that joke. And, it's and got the, a good turn. The, the, shortest, the shortest joke that, that the like all those, I, I happen to be Jewish from New York, so I remember every old lady, old couple joke there is. But mm-hmm. the short one that Keegan loves is the old woman yells downstairs to her husband and she says, Morty, why don't you come upstairs and make love to me? And he says, fine, but I can't do both. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a pretty quick one. Nice. Ready? Yes. Quick turn. Ready. I hate people okay. that don't laugh. They just do their joke next. Um, that's me. Uh, okay, so it's a good beginning. Uh, a five-year-old and a child molester are walking into the woods at night. <laughs> and... The, you've heard it. And so I've not heard five, it. I just the five year old goes, Mister, I'm scared. And he goes, You're scared. After this, I gotta walk out of here by myself. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, anyway, I I we're gonna I, go to a commercial. Is that is that <laughs> do you two write those kind of like I, I'm terrible at really thinking of jokes? Like I would have to you know, I do this bad, bad redneck character. You know, uh, Red Red Necky, the redneck comedian, and it's intentionally bad. I've never gotten it to work very well, but you have <laughs> It works on here. You haven't fought so loud, dog, two state away, go, what that? Come and get some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, the come and get some is the funniest It's part. a come and get some. Come and get some. You ever crap so big you don't know going to get down that toilet? Come and get some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad my sister only because mama turned me down. Come and get some. But I, <laughs> only because mama turned me down. Dad, come, mama, and get come and get some. Oh, yeah. I told mom, I said to mama, what's for dinner? She said, roadkill. I said, what kind? She says, I got to take a drive. Come and get some. (laughs) So those are the, I could write in that character a little bit, but they're intentionally really bad, but really good twisted jokes. I I don't have that skill set. Like a good turn on a joke is a good one. Do you have another one? Another short, a short joke? Do you have an, uh, it's hard to know jokes. It's hard to think of them. It's yeah. stuff. She's got just I, great, I just I, great I, jokes. I, I, I have an X rated one that I don't yeah. know if it's that funny. Someone told it to me, but if you take it literally, sometimes people go, ooh, what is one? How do you get a dog to stop pumping your leg? Pick him up and blow him. Pick him okay. up. Okay. All right. <laughs> we, we can. <laughs> I love that someone told it to you. He's like, I didn't make it up. <laughs> I didn't make don't it up. Don't blame the messenger. We're back here with L and Keegan. So what makes you two laugh the most right now? Like, do you go to movies? you go to YouTube? 
um, this we, podcast. We, um, <laughs> so so, so <laughs> I, I'm very fortunate. Uh, Christopher Guest also was someone I spoke to who's in the book, and he's become someone we nice. we, uh, we we adore. And um, he, I think King and I have fun playing the gym game, which is, do you know the gym game? Mm-mm. No. Uh, I guess it was Christopher Guest and uh, who else was Harry that? Shearer. And Harry Shearer. Oh. So we're on we're on some project together. We're, I don't know if it was Quantum Tap or something else or um, SNL. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was around SNL. It might have been SNL time. Could have they been had SNL. that one year together? I think that's right. I, it was mm-hmm. Billy C- uh, Crystal. And that, yeah. So they have a, a a game that they play called the Gym Game that I actually heard through a friend, and then I had when I met Christopher, I asked him to to back up. To, so I've heard about this Gym Game. It's basically that the the concept. Oh, there was a. a there was a TV commercial with Jim Amici years and years ago that was Don Amici's brother, mm-hmm. younger brother. And he says, hi, I'm Jim Amici. And then he sells whatever thing he's peddling. <laughs> and they thought this, this idea that every famous person has a younger, lesser known yeah. brother named Jim. <laughs> so if you see, if you see so. someone that looks like Brad Pitt, but you know it's not Brad Pitt. You go, ah, Jim Pitt. There's and Jim that Pitt, there's yeah. Jim Pitt. So so Keegan and I have had uh fun. Even even to even yesterday, I was like, but but Chris would be very upset because I I try to make it as easy as possible as I say the full name of the person. Because you mm. can't if you say Jim Smith, you don't know who you're talking about. Yeah. So and please forgive me, Christopher, if you hear this. But I it's not the gym, it's not the official gym game. I apologize. But I say, hey, look, it's Jimmy Brad Pitt. So if I say Jimmy Brad Pitt, he will then look around the room and <laughs> right. see who I'm talking. You like, cheated oh, that's, a little bit. That's, that's pretty fine. good. Help that's em. pretty good. So yesterday we saw someone and I said, uh, Jimmy John Goodman, Jimmy John Goodman. And he looked very, I mean, very really much. uncanny like it John like, Goodman. He looked like John Goodman. He looked like <laughs> bigger, skinny John Goodman. So, so, uh, so, so we do, we play the gym game, but uh, I, I told I told Chris that I was with Keegan and we were in California and we were somewhere like south of LA and I saw this really beat up hotel by the beach. And Mm -hmm. I said, look, Jim Shutters. Yeah. That's good. (laughs) Yeah. Shutters is a beautiful hotel. I used to do, I think Michael Keaton had a bit of like Hitler's brother be like Biff Hitler or, you know, everyone's done bits like, like Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Lincoln, Eddie Lincoln. Eddie Lincoln. Eddie, Eddie right, Lincoln. Yeah. You know those are the word. I, I like that. I also like uh, shortening names. When you, I watched talk shows as a kid, and they, they'd say. So I, I was, I was talking to John Carson, and Eddie McMahon. Oh, Every, right, that's funny. Everything yeah. has always slightly changed. <laughs> you know, John, Car- John Carson, Bob, Bobby, yeah. Bobby Mitchum, and uh, Robbie Redford. Whatever. Anyway, but uh, the, the gym game's fun because if you see someone and someone else knows. I'd be like Jim, Jimmy Barber Streisand. It's a Jimmy good Barbara code. So then uh, yeah. You just gotta, you know, eyes, your eyes have to dart, but you have to be very kind of nondescript when you're doing it, mm. not conspicuous. But, then, but you could also, in conversation, be like someone leaves or they were rude, and be like, "What just happened?" You know, Jimmy Jam Franco, whatever, whatever, you know, whoever it was just so by. maybe like, perhaps you'd see me, and they'd say uh, Jimmy Billy Mummy. From Lost in Space. Some people they think of Billy, Billy, Billy Mummy. Billy Mummy. Billy Mummy. He was from Lost in Space, 1969. Sorry, I'm dating myself. But, but I didn't uh, tell you. So, so John Belushi has a brother named Jim. Tom Hanks has a brother named Jim. Yeah, there yeah. are actually famous people who have younger brothers. And I think that's how mm. you win, by the way, is if you actually see a younger brother of a successful actor and his name is Jim, I yeah. think you win the game. No, that's it. You know, I it's think, uh, guys, I think that when I was doing the improv at the beginning, Shit, I was like 21. I think Tom's brother was a waiter there and Jim Hanks. I think mm-hmm. we should have asked Tom because I think what he did is he was a waiter and then he'd get up on stage and try stand up. And he ah. once said he would wear his waiter uniform, which is funny. And he would say, You know, Tom Hanks is my brother. And I think one of his jokes that I liked was people will say, You're a waiter and he's a super big movie star. Why doesn't he just give you a million dollars? Does anyone know why? I don't know why. <laughs> That's why good. doesn't he give me a million dollars? He said, why doesn't he? I don't know. Why doesn't he? That's that a would good be way, so easy for a him. A good way to own that because it's, yeah, that's a tough position. <laughs> yeah, at least people are thinking it, so you just throw it out there. But I guess he was a stand. I don't know, but 
it's tough. I mean, to be super famous like that. By the that way, and- Dennis Miller, our friend, his his little brother is Jimmy Miller, who used Jimmy to be Miller. used to make That's right. French fries. The manager. Tommy. Yeah, the manager, great manager, yeah, Jimmy. Manager. Yeah, who talks a little bit like Dennis, just laid back, Richie a little bit. Richie mm-hmm. and Jimmy. Yeah, they Jim, all you ever accent. run into Jimmy? He's got you in a headlock within like a minute. Come here, come no, no, within, every, yeah, he's getting. He's yeah. He, that guy loves a noogie. He loves or he'll grab your. He'll grab your hand and like twist your hand. <laughs> I know he <laughs> likes to kind of. But you're a big guy. But with me, he's sort of like, yeah. Jimmy, please, you know. I, mean, you I get picked up way too much. With Dave, uh, you know, David, uh, people just pick him up like a puppet. Yeah, like, what are yeah, you? Yeah, they put me on their shoulders and we walk blocks. And I go, put me down, blocks, blocks. All right, can. <laughs> Keegan, uh, you don't know this, but you are in Hotel Transylvania, and you <laughs> play the mummy. I think because I do in play also. the mummy. I do. Play the- now is this? But you, we, did you replace CeeLo Green? Is that my possible recollection? I was. Yes, yeah. CeeLo was in the first movie, and then I was in uh, two, two, and three, three, four, and four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think also for the, all those uh, buffs. Of Hotel Transylvania. Dana's one of them. I was it. in, I did a character, but it wasn't even a character. I was in one of them. I can't remember. I love it. I don't even remember that. I, don't I think. didn't get to Were watch. Really, Dana? Yeah, I was. I, you know, my, vo- I can't even remember my voice, but I, I knew that it was a, it was a no, non starter. You said, I'm a vampire. I want your blood. Come and get some. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that guy. Uh, my, no, you know, I, I, I don't even know if you, if your character and my character have ever interacted with each other. I think we hang out in the movie a little bit, like in a pack. Yeah, that's usually the thing. Yeah, we hang out in the pack, and the me drag and pack. Frank. But and Frank. I I got to come alive. I'm only glasses because I'm invisible, Dana. This is you might want to get a pen. I'm only invisible in the first three, but this one we reverse and we turn back in to we people into or humans. something. Yeah. That was a good one. They do a good job with those, by the way. I think they they're do. funny as shit. Can I ask you guys a, a random question? Because because uh, you're doing yeah. animation, so people ask me, hey, "What do you what do you get paid for one of those kind of things?" <laughs> you know, what, 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 you, you, what you know? you? So for either of you, you, what you don't have to say what it is, but there's certain things that you kind of get paid more than you think you would, or other things are maybe a, you're getting checks in the mail. Right. I mean, what have been some home runs for you financially in a surprising way? Like I I did a thing for cat and dogs and it got, I did it to an actor. They didn't like what he was doing and they tried to get me to dub his voice. So they didn't use it. It didn't work because the animation was already done. I got checks for 20 years. Really? Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I'm trying to think what, what, I, what, what, what was the easiest job for the most money? <laughs> you know, kind of, yeah, I mean, 10 I, seconds. I, did you ever write anything? You got a big writing shit that those are good residuals. I remember writing Nick, check, the writing Nick Swartzen thing. wrote Bench Warmers with Sandler. I guess I guess I came out of I came out producing, of producing, right? Yeah, got a back films. check. So when you produce an independent film, you kind of learn every single job you could possibly learn on a movie mm-hmm, or on sure. a project. So when I started getting jobs that actually paid, I was like, oh well, I'll I can write it and I'll edit it and I'll do the storyboard for it and I can do all these things and. People are like, oh, no, no, you don't have to do that. You could just write the commercial or direct the campaign. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, I have an idea for the campaign. What if I pitch the idea for the campaign to the client, which I don't think happens that often. That no, it doesn't. That they consider a director. They say, hey, you know, mm-hmm. we, we've done a whole bunch of campaigns together. They say, then I'll write and direct them. And Keegan is the razzmatazz. And and uh, and so I, I ended up getting getting to a place where people would stop hiring that wouldn't use their agency the middleman use us for everything so between the two of us right. we've we are kind of a you know we have a package a, deal one stop what shopping. would be your yeah. dream as a couple do you have a sense of maybe doing a, an indie film together or i, I will... not well not an indie film but i'm i'm gonna direct a, a film feature next year i'm directing a, a grown-up film yes is um, your husband is it in it ups? or he's, yes. he is in it? Um, I, I like to say that I um, he was he was cast as a supporting role and then he mm. married me and now he has the upgrade. I've given him an upgrade. Oh, to the lead. Now, so where now, does this are you the lead? Long game. What? So it's a sci-fi romantic adventure. So <laughs> no. three auditions. So it, it, open on the space. Oh. I know my I, one of our one of our publicists is on the is on the call. It hasn't it hasn't been announced yet, but um. 
it's going to be a kind of a cop action movie with Keegan as the lead. Okay, let's guess what the title is for a second, David. What do you think the working title? It's an action uh, gangster type. New York action. New York movie. action. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to call it Tenth Avenue. Tenth Avenue. Not bad. All right. I've, okay. Tenth okay. Avenue. I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's been this would be the, the biggest the money maker of my career if i name this thing and get little residual <laughs> check if yeah. i live to 105 i'll tell my kids it was that 10th avenue yeah. go ahead david but actually it, it actually uh, it's i don't know how funny a story it is but when i i first wrote the script we were we it was years ago i first wrote and i wrote, wrote it as a straight drama and i put um one of like i have an uncle joe my dad's best friend, Uncle a Joe. real Uncle Joe. So, I have an oh. Uncle Joe, Joey Saladino. So oh. I call him. I said, "Look, I wrote this script. I'm going to send it out to a bunch of agents, a bunch of producers, and I don't want to put my name on it. I don't want them to think a woman wrote it. I I put the name Frank Saladino as the writer. <laughs> I like it, and that is how I sent the script out. And I took a whole bunch of meetings, and they're like, Frank Saladino, did he work on The Wire? I think I knew mm-hmm. Frank. See, Frank's <laughs> like, yeah. and uh, Frank. Frank's great, right? I, you know, I think I've heard of Frank. I think I knew Frank when he worked on uh, NYPD Blue. Did Frank work on? And, uh, and mm-hmm. people, he has no IMDb page. He does not exist. And people think Funny. Frank Saladino. They just go, I like it better that a guy wrote this. Frank Saladino wrote this. Smart. Movie. If you'd made it Frankie Saladino, it would have even yeah. been too. Right. Hey, you could be a Frankie. I, I actually, it was my nickname in college, believe it or not, was, was Frank. Frankie, Sorry, Har- Frankie is a switch. Harlem adjacent. Frankie is a s- official like Robin or Dana or whatever. It's a switch hitter name. A woman can be Frankie, yeah. right? And it's not yeah. a problem. Yeah. Frank so is I, cute. I, saw, I saw friends who call me Frank. I went to Syracuse and I, it was a joke freshman year and it, and I became Frank for all of college. So I was like, okay, I'm calling it Frank Saladino. And that's how I sent it out to the world. And then. Uh, then my agents at UTA were like, you know, there aren't a lot of women, female writer directors in the genre at all. So they said it's That's good. No, it's I'm trying to think of name on it. So Harlem adjacent opens. Well, we're gonna shoot it. Har- Harlem adjacent. Okay, we have Tenth Avenue. We have Har- Harlem, Harlem adjacent. Harlem adjacent. Okay, Tenth <laughs> Avenue. Just put like it in that. the mix. It's not titles are not are oh, not. I've got I've got one a little more dramatic because I just see a picture yeah. of Keegan. You know, play time's over. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and that's his catchphrase right before he har- he kills the entire neighborhood. Play right. time, play time's, times. What over. if you're still in your medieval costume and it's Sir Lance's shot, <laughs> and you've got Sir a gun Lance. this time? <laughs> what if Sir you're Lance's the substitute shot. teacher, but you're back in heat? Yeah. If you don't pronounce your name right, there's going to be hell to pay. And you got yeah. a big bull whip. School's back for the summer. School's back. School. So, School's so back. you know, you know, Keegan's talent, you live with him and you know how much he's done with, when you direct this film, are you trying to tease out something he hasn't been able to oh, show yeah, off? Because it seems like he's done 900 things. The research is unbelievable. <laughs> All the sketch shows and movies and television if, if you get if you get a chance to see the, the opening of the nfl honors last year that was got my uh my baby and I nfl honors on youtube yeah and i yeah. wanted keegan i i was like i want keegan to rap in it i want keegan's gonna tell jokes he's gonna sing by the way he has a, a beautiful hip? voice oh. which um i learned he has a stunning stunning voice and I, I made him, Beautiful. I, I inspired him to sing at our wedding and our agents were like, you sing Keegan. How come you didn't tell us this? Like, it was, can, yeah. I so ask, can I ask Keegan a question? Keegan, what can't you do? Cause I could no, do a lot go. of things, but I really can't sing. I could fake mm-hmm. sing, but I can't sing. So you're doing all this sketch stuff, all these characters, all these impressions, and now you can sing. Is there anything that's a little bit difficult for you? Can you dance, kid? <laughs> can you dance? I'm not. I'm not. I, let's say this. I I think I can move. I'm right. not a dancer, but you know that that's a thing that people say. It's like like oh, he can move. He can move. But I'm not. I, right. I would say yeah, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, you I'm can not like a like I can swim. I can get from one side of the pool to the other side right. of the pool. Like right, I right. Think- <laughs> what are, it's Shmega Dune. Don't you have to have to dance or no? The thing is, they never give me any dancing in Schmigadoon. You just watch it? He's the guy who <laughs> yeah. doesn't like musicals. Because I'm the guy that doesn't like musicals. So the thing is, is oh, okay. I love them in real life, which is the thing is I absolutely love them in real life. That's you can watch dancing. That's another thing you've got. 
I don't. Yeah. Here's, so that's all here's an inside yeah. baseball thing. Why yeah. on this subject, I found interesting. I know someone who works with Jimmy Fallon, and when Justin Timberlake would come on, and they're doing this very advanced choreography, and Justin's obviously super talented. But Jimmy, could you show it to him once? And he's got all the steps down. You know, he just has that skill set of really being able to oh, do wow, choreograph dancing. Yeah, he's good at it. I mean, God, half his show is pre-tapes. I wouldn't be able to do that. It's so hard anyway. And then pre-tape after, learn a dance, pre-tape, learn this. Yeah, it's pre-tape. So we go to Coney Island with J-Lo. It's like every time <laughs> there's something going on. Anyway, but I definitely to enough answer, about him. Sorry, to answer your question, Dana, I definitely try to say, I, I know that Keegan wants to do more action and things like that. So I want to, so I write, I'm writing for him really mm -hmm. fun things for him to do. So I'm writing for him things that I want to see him do that I know he can do. I love the genre. I, I do like revenge movies. I like kick-ass mob stuff. You know, I love Sopranos. I love the Scorsese stuff, Goodfellas. So it'd be fun to see Keegan in an environment like that, you know? So that was a very long, long answer of, yes, this is, this is something that we want to do. Well, but, it's very but intriguing, decided, this movie. I took the, I took the drama, I took a lot of the drama, I made it more, uh, well, one of, one of our, both of our favorite movies is, um, is Midnight Run. That's so what I'm I was going to ask you. The, oh my God. Oh my God. So in the, it's an action movie. movie and it, but we say it's a comedy, but the bullets are real. It's kind of the way we, I think if it. you put as someone who can operate in all these different comedy frequencies, sounds very intellectual, someone like Keegan, and you put them in a world that's heavy, you know, I'm not saying taxi driver level, but there, there's big laughs to be had there with the, the out of speech. seriousness. Yeah. Always, always, always. I was curious about, this is what I'm curious now, seeing all this and listening to you guys. As a artistic, whatever, capital A, couple, uh, steeped in all this creativity, you know, what are the things, this the tentpole movies that you share or movies or television or streaming or stuff you watch together and look at each other and go, holy shit, you know, or, or movies that you, touchstones that you might watch every other year or, or cartoons. I don't know. I'm just curious about how you consume all this, uh, your own, uh, your own habits, consuming art. The the show that we both just are in awe of is Barry. I think Barry's oh, phenomenal. Yeah. I never got, Barry. no, it's brilliant. That's I love real it. bullets. There you go. That's that, that balance of comedy and, and drama. Oh, yeah. Barry is, uh, a Anthony, what's his name? Anthony Corrigan. Anthony Corrigan. Oh, the bad, the <laughs> Russian bad no, guy. No, Hank. No, ho Hank. No, ho Hank. No, ho Hank. Yeah. It's just, he never I'm not makes going the first to hurt you. choice. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm being ridiculous. But that, what do you love about it most? He never makes the first choice. It's yeah. like he always makes the 18th choice and it's perfect. Yeah, he does but surprise it, you with his rhythms, what you're saying. The way he reads the line, it's always a little what you're not expecting. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and that nice balance between the, the, the comedy and the drama and and there is absurdism in the show as well yeah mm -hmm. that but 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 it's always based in something grounded mm -hmm. it, it, it really i i just thought that bill did such a great job bill and alec did such a great you, job with that show what, you know mm -hmm. i just thought it was Love that show. oh yeah. One, yeah one of my favorite cinematic moments is is the first indiana jones when harrison ford has been fighting all these people and this guy has, you know, his knight, his sword, and and Harrison Ford takes out a gun and shoots him because yeah. he's so tired. It's like that. That's kind of that feeling of of Barry just being like, "Oh God, now I got to kill this guy. Really, yeah. I got to do this." Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. That. Oh yeah, Some when someone won't stop attacking and fighting, like, oh fuck, you're dead. What about right? when he tells the girlfriend like, it, yeah. how he would make his make her friend go insane if he went in her house and changed things around? <laughs> And the girl's just staring at him and he makes it sound so normal. And she's like, are you out of your fucking mind, dude? Right. He is like, <laughs> but he says it so earnestly. He goes, this is actually pretty easy. Um, I just break in every night. I just change your furniture around. I just make her go insane quietly. And she's like, dude, what are you talking about? Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> he just got so, it, it's it's so very, it's, like it's just well done overall. Yeah. Without getting in. One of those great shows. What about movies? 
You have five seconds. I said mid- Midnight Run is <laughs> Midnight Run. Midnight Run is okay. Such that's a something. Killer. Yeah, that's just one of those movies. Like, I love that's it. That's a classic. Midnight Run is one of those films. It's just it. it, it there's it, everything's right about it. Yeah. It, Even it, just you know, Joey Joey Pants on the phone and the guy next to him mm-hmm. trying to punch him in the gut while he's on the phone, like. Or, oh, the two, know, two guys and the, the two guys out in the in the in the two guys out in the in the desert field, yeah. in the in the um, phone booth. Every right, every little right. thing, like just every small. Well, movie. there's almost no one like Charles Grodin out there. Yeah. Anymore. Oh, you mean when J- John o- when Austin is? Oh, John uh, Austin. Uh, is yeah, right. when he's oh, yeah when the when the when he's smoking a cigarette and he goes to buy a ticket at the airport and the person says, "Would you like smoking or not smoking?" Goes, "What do you think?" With, with, the with the cigarette with the cigarette in his hand and, and it's just just small little jokes that are jokes but aren't jokes at the same time right. just, just throwaways not, yeah throwaways that work and just beautiful behavioral stuff that yeah. movie it's so that's the yeah. thing you can get in film you know i i love it too as a i've never been in a good movie really i've been in a broad comedy but you can get those little moments in film it's so much fun digital cameras editing all the tools are so much cheaper um, oh yeah, Midnight Run. So Charles Grow, he was funny when God rest his soul, one of our greats oh, in the '90s. Remember when he did his MSNBC show? He was a he was a talk show host for a while. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, no, yeah, I and, don't remember. And that. I I, don't I that. came on and he said, "I want you to do the whole interview." I can't, I used to do him perfect. I couldn't get it now. I do the whole interview as Johnny, so I had to stay. In Johnny Carson for twenty minutes so with Charles weird. Grodin, <laughs> and it's exhausting. <laughs> Grodin is a rare sure. talent that we don't have one like that. I don't think we don't have it. Yeah, you're right. We don't have another Grodin right well, now. Do, I mean, do we? well, Who you, is? Um, uh, what's the? I'm sorry. Uh, the, do not blank. No, Mel Street. The movie about heaven. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, uh, defending your life. Albert Brooks. Oh, Albert, Brooks. Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks. Yes, but he's not been as busy lately. Uh, Albert, you, you, that's pretty close. Where are you? Are you listening, Albert? <laughs> Get on but def- defending your life was one of my favorites. Oh yeah, that's another life one. Is great. Lo- love that's not the casino is. one, is it? That's a different one. That's across no. America or something. Defending your life is the one with him and Meryl Streep, where they're in kind of a way station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be thinking there. of movies after we stop the podcast. Yeah. It is sort of like I'll say Stanley Kubrick. Martin Scorsese, uh, Quentin Tarantino, uh, who did Alien? Sorry, <laughs> and Gladiator. Uh, Rid- Ridley, Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott. Oh, James, James Cameron. James Cameron. Well, Jimmy Scott Cameron. True Romance. True Romance. True is one of Romance. Our is a hit. Christopher Walken. Is that where he has the speech about? The, yeah. Where he has the speech. The thing with in his, yeah. 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 One of the greatest scenes in cinematic history. Yeah. That you know. that scene yeah. in that in that trailer. Oh, oh my god. I, I, you give me chills because I've watched that and I've shown it to people. Just that scene, as far as just sort of a perfect scene with Christopher Walken being Christopher Walken, Dennis Especially Hopper. Especially when you watch the whole movie and you ramp up to it and you hit it, it's like. Oh and when the God. guy knows he's gonna die and and gets the cigarette and stuff, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I may watch it's it after. Totally yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I also love the the first Born movie. Uh, I'm a huge Doug Liman fan. Oh yeah, and, Jason oh. Bourne with with Matty Damon. Yeah, the first the first burn identity is so <laughs> simple, and it's done so well. The first one? Such, oh, the first. The first one. Okay, yeah. I like any meme that has some kid doing something stupid in karate and falling down, and then you cut to the guy going, <laughs> "Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne." <laughs> oh yeah, it's so funny. Yeah. We yeah. we um what, we are we are a little obsessed with the wrong Missy. There you go, David. Hey. I told you there is there is a place in our, the wrong Missy has a very special place in our heart. The cliff when she goes off that cliff. Oh fucking shit! Three days of shooting her whomping on that cliff. <laughs> oh my god that was so I, yeah I, that I movie just popped it's great i've recommended the wrong missy but I, when i do it i apologize when i recommend it but it i go it's you will laugh out loud it is so good and then you're going to be mad that you laughed out loud yeah but then <laughs> the opening scene because it's, it's very a hard r movie the opening scene we're on a date i'm this kind of nerdy guy dana and she goes she starts going quit i fucking me and I'm like, I'm not. And she's like, no, this dick behind you. And it's like this huge wrestler guy. And he goes, I'm not doing shit. And she goes, fuck you. My boyfriend's going to kick your fucking ass. I'm like, this is the first day of shooting. Because she was supposed to say some of that. And then like, just keep going, keep going. And to keep it within reason. But every take, we'd start laughing. And I'm like, God damn. And it was, it was kind of hard because I was a straight man. 
and it's hard to be a straight man. And it's so funny to watch her go nuts. So everyone would just try to help feed her stuff. Like, just, cause she's so good on her own. She doesn't need anything, but it was such a fun movie. Cause that, that was the first day of shooting. So you start to go, Oh, this might be good because it's, if we can keep doing this kind Damn, of shit. It is insane. Yeah. Thank you. Have you seen it? Have you seen the wrong Missy? Oh yeah. He's going to. Oh yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. I just thought it, oh, yeah? it she was brilliant in it. I mean, it was yeah, like a tour. Great. I've said tour de force three times on this. This podcast. is the third time. This but is the third th that's time. a true like a star is born. I mean, and uh, Jim Carrey asked, you know, the physicality and her commitment yeah. And, oh, yeah, and the yeah. staging she... of it and everything about it. It just worked. It's also great. out of nowhere. Like no one. Plus, it's a movie when I'm in it, they're probably looking to me to be like, oh, how funny is he going to be in this? And then she's right next to me killing it. And you're like, no, this is where you look. In this one, you know what I mean? They're like, in this one, in this yeah, one, exactly. I'm, right. I was like intrigued by the script because I go, oh, this is kind of like Meet the Parents, where I'm the Ben Stiller, everything's happening around me. Nick Swartzen's weird, everyone's weird, and I'm trying to hold it down. And that's a fun thing to play, like Jason Bateman does it a lot, you know? And yeah, like, exactly. he's or Keegan and Schmigadoon, he's not part of the crew. Yeah, it's fun to go, it's it, that's an important job, too. I keep telling myself, and um, so to watch it all unfold. And have it do well was was a lot of fun. Can we can we uh, do a shout there. out to Cecily Strong before you know? Yeah, and you you and her and, and Schmigadoon. I mean, yeah. I, when the second season is out or what, where are you at? Second season's out. Yeah, okay. second season yeah. Is, is finished, so you can watch that whole. Yeah. You can, your person can binge that season if they want to. They call it Schmicago. Schmicago. Schmigadoon. Binge the shit out of it. Also, to sum That's up, Dana, I want to say Keegan is from Southfield, Michigan. I'm from Bloomfield Hills. Uh, he was adopted as a child. I was told I was adopted. We have a lot of things in common. <laughs> um, uh, and <laughs> What are you reading? That's all we have in common. That's it. Uh, one last uh, thing I, I also, had for him. Okay, go ahead. One last, one last thing. One we, can, we can take a break and come back. Uh, <laughs> your experience is playing uh, Obama's anger translator. Just that White House correspondence. There, what, that must have been sort of a out-of-body kind of gig i mean how that come about it was a weird one it was uh i remember i had i had, i had spoken to one of his junior speech writers mm -hmm. and they were asking if, if, if we wanted to do something sometime and i was like yeah that, that would be wonderful wow and they got in contact with my manager at the time and he was like do you think it'd be possible for you to go to the white house correspondence dinner and, and do this thing <laughs> yes. and i said yeah let me let me sp talk to the speech writer so i spoke to the speech writer he wrote the speech he wrote the scene for us. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was, it was, it, it, I, I remember rehearsing it so much that I knew Obama's lines and my lines. <laughs> that was like, it was, it was, it was so important to me to get it, to nail it. Cause I figured mm -hmm. he's got other things on his mind, right? He's yeah. not just thinking about no, the it's speech. The president. Got, it's the president. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's, yeah. he's got other stuff going on. He wants on. to jump in. He's like, Oh, this is next. Do this. But right, you've right. rehearsed. So right. you're ready. Ex ex exactly. Right. Yeah. So I had to be ready. And he was a hell of a straight man. He was so. Yeah, he's funny. He knows. So, he really, he gets comedy. Like yes. he gets comedy. And it was really, really fantastic. And, and But I remember not thinking about the magnitude of the moment until literally seconds before I walked on stage. I mean, mm -hmm. seconds, because I had just been rehearsing, rehearsing, mm -hmm. rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing. And then all of a sudden I'm backstage and I hear him go, uh, I'm going to bring in my uh, anger translator, Luther. And then I start to enter. And as I enter, <laughs> I, I would kind of like, freak out. I, I'm like, I was like, yeah, I'm in character. Yeah. But my heart, all of a sudden, my heart was trying to catch up to how nervous I should sure. be. <laughs> when was your first <laughs> laugh? Was it, did your first line get a big laugh? And then you kind of, I mean, just right, just right away. Just the intro probably got a laugh. Yeah. yeah first, line, there were, there were people in the audience who knew the character. Yeah. The majority of the people in the audience did not know the character, mm -hmm. but there were, there were people in the audience who knew the character. And so that kind of calmed me down when I heard people go, yeah. Luther. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. all right, we're going to be all right. And then the first joke came out, it murdered first, yeah. joke, first joke murdered. And so then I knew I was going to be okay. Then you calmed down. Yeah. Just look over, and he was just—he was just killing it as the straight man, mm. killing it. Yeah, it was really good. And yeah, he's pretty good. Can I, I ask one more question? <laughs> Sorry, we keep ending, but so you guys have been married four years, and now I've gotten to know five. you as a five couple. years. We've been married five years now. I okay. think it's four. I checked, but anyway, no. Uh, <laughs> how, how do you, how do you? Um, resolve conflict or do you go to therapy marital or is it is it 
you have such a flow at this point in your lives, you know, with each other or how's the marriage going? You seem very happy, but sometimes there's a lot of tension underneath. I'm kidding. No. I think the, the work. The, <laughs> I was like, "This so, is your last quote." The work stuff is is easy, mm-hmm. which is which is odd because I feel like people are always like, "I oh, I couldn't work with my wife or I couldn't work with my husband," mm-hmm. and they go, "How do you do that?" I said, "Well, we were friends and we were working together and figuring out how to work together before the other stuff. Before said, you well, became romantic." Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't so, know that. So that's a big, big difference. So your friends. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So we're friends, like similar sense of humor. We, um, no, what, what is it that we, uh, well, we, we, we've, you know, we, we're, we get along really our, well. Our minds are kind of work as one. It's, it's amazing. We really do. We, it's like we finish each other's sandwiches, sentences. sandwich, S- sandwiches, those sandwiches. Can I, uh, can I ask you a, a romantic, a romantic, like a romantic question? Because I've never had that experience. I've been married for seventy-one years of it. We're happily married, but uh, <laughs> it, uh, this idea that you're friends, and mm-hmm. then maybe at some point one of you realizes subconsciously, or consciously, well, this feels like more than friends to me. Like I'm really physically attracted. So there's this moment where you're just friends, and then you start making out. <laughs> What's that like? Does it, do you laugh about it? Like, because you're just pals for how but you're long. scared that the other person might, it might ruin everything. Go, what the fuck? I thought we were friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's- I think, I think we both, because we, we didn't meet until we were in our forties. Um, and Keegan was uh, se- was separating and didn't have children, but they were mm-hmm. he was going through his separation, mm-hmm. and I was kind of like, look, you know, I want to stay away from all of that. You you go do what you gotta gotta do. Yeah, but yeah. I think it, basically the big thing was is what is a partner and what is a friend and what does a friend mean and what does it mean to be a good partner to someone? And partners are people who inspire each other. They support each other. They provoke each other they try to bring out each other's strengths i mean ideally that's that's what you want in a partner and when we were friends and i knew keen peel was going to be ending soon and i actually was lucky enough i was able to go to a couple of tapings of the show and i mm-hmm. brought some friends to see him and see the show and um it was really phenomenal to be there and see those interstitials before the end um i said to keegan if you could do anything after keen peel ends Anything in the world, you had a silver platter and you put anything on it and you didn't have any story standing in your way about what you could do. You didn't have a story standing in your way. What would you do? And it was a really like, it was a question that really threw him. It was difficult to answer. And then, and then eventually he said, I want to do Shakespeare and I want to be Jason Bourne. And I was like, so you have theater agents. You can you can talk to your theater agents, and you can fly to New York and meet with everybody and tell them you want to do theater. And within a year and a half of that conversation, um, Keegan was at the Public Theater uh, with Oscar Isaac in Hamlet. He uh, Doug Lyman, who and 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 I've become friends over the years. I said I can introduce you to Doug Lyman, and Doug put Keegan in an action sequence in the TV show. And I was like, you can do any of these things. You're the only person stopping yourself from these things. You're the only one standing in your way. And I think that kind of that, I think that that shift Mm -hmm. was kind of where Keegan and I, where Keegan was like, well, hey, wait a second, don't leave. (laughs) Can you stay around for a minute? Like, how are you able to figure out? Or forever. You know, (laughs) it's good to have Uh, someone you trust right there. I mean, there's a lot of positives uh, to it. Can can you do that again? How did you do that? What can we do next? How do we, how do we, what do we do? And I'm saying, well, how do we, you know, as long as you keep asking the universe for things and find a way to share and give back, the universe keeps giving you things. So I was like, well, what do you want to do? And how do we share? And how can, and, and one of the, the things that on a side note, is that when I write for Keegan for comedy, which we didn't get into, and I know you're going to cut stuff down later when you need to. Oh, no, to, these, these can go and, pretty long. Is, Don't uh, worry. <laughs> how, is that, uh, how, how do you And write? we talked a little bit about this at, we were at the Milken conference a couple of weeks ago in LA, is they asked what we want to talk about. And I said, I really want to talk about, you can be mean with humor or you can be inclusive with humor and make people laugh. Mm-hmm. And for the last couple of years, anything I write for Keegan 
if you see, he does not make fun of people. Mm -hmm. He does not punch down. He's not mean to anyone. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want anytime you tell a joke in public or on stage, you can be funny. And also you can lift people and be inclusive. You can be self-deprecating. But mm -hmm. we've done a bunch of TV shows together where I give the writers a really hard time. I said, you are not allowed to make fun of Keegan. Keegan can make fun of Keegan. Mm -hmm. But you should not be, we're not making fun of the other people on the show, mm -hmm. anyone on a panel. We're not, even even for the NFL honors thing, I called Gronk and I said, Gronk, these are the jokes. Which joke do you want to be part of? And which joke mm -hmm. do you feel comfortable with? And how do you want us to tell it so that you're in mm -hmm. on it? Like, I want you to be in on it. And I, I think, you know, that, that there's something about the fact that the two of us together can do more good in the world than either of us could do if we were apart. Yeah. So, oh, I'm so glad you got to say that. Than, it was bigger yeah, than both answer. of us. That's really, really interesting. Well, Keegan, uh, obviously, as a performer, has an extreme likability quotient, is sort of a gift. I, I think Colin Jost did a, his book, he called it a punchable face, but Keegan is joyful in it when he's performing. I mean, you can tell he's having a blast, even when he's being, you know, doing whatever he's doing. So that's cool. So you guys have a, it's a very mature relation. When you get together, you've already had life under behind you, you know, in your forties. So yeah, I guess yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's very mature. So you know all the tricks of the trade, all the ditches, all the stuff. That sounds like um I'm going to say this is a good relationship. I'm gonna give it five stars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank we're, you, gonna, we're gonna come on the couch in your place tomorrow and we'll talk about other things. But it know? is someone you trust and respect, which you both have for each other, which is great, and says stuff to you. It just it's it's like therapy, which I started when I was 60, but that's another story. But um, it's great in that context. Like you will do that. You know, it's very interesting how we get in our own way as performers. Well, I want to do an action. Movie. We'll do, do one. We what well, you yeah. gonna, you know. And and now I'm I'm like, well, I'll you know I'll write one for you. Let's yeah. just do that. Yeah, and you'll write one for me. We were texting during the podcast. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Elle and I. Oh, and yeah, th yeah. So that you guys are going to do Harlem adjacent too. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. doing Harlem loaded and locked. I so down. I have a bottle I of booze down. and a gun. On the loaded, oh. loaded, loaded and locked. Loaded and <laughs> locked. <laughs> there are lance of shots. I think I wrote down. Um, okay, good. Those are all good. They're all <laughs> usable. That's good. Um, you, you. Would, I'm I actually. I don't have a title for it, but I've been trying to come up with the name. Like his character, the name of his character has more than one meaning. I love mm -hmm. those movies like that. I love it too. Keegan Michael Key and L Key have been our guests today. Uh, love seeing you. Love getting to know people on these podcasts. Really fun, and I hope we run into each other, or as I like to say. See you around campus, the campus of show business. And yeah. Shrinkadoon is everywhere. I recommend it to anyone, especially if you don't not exclusively love Broadway musicals. It really rocks. You and Cecily are great in that. All right. Bye, guys. All right. We'll bye. see you. Have a good bye. day. Take care. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Awkward leave. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 